Hello and welcome to this new video series of using modules in Python. Modules are where you can take Python programming to new heights. You can create your own modules or use some of the already available modules to help convert a simple piece of code into something spectacular. Do you want to see how to make better use of these modules to add a little something extra to your code? Then I suggest you follow this new module series which will be divided into several videos that will be uploaded on a weekly basis. In this first video, we are going to explore together the calendar module. Beyond the time module, the calendar module can produce some interesting results when executed within your code. It does far more than simply display the date in the time module-like format. You can actually call up a wall calendar type display. The calendar module is built into Python 3. However, if for some reason it's not installed, you can add it using pip install calendar as a Windows administrator or sudo pip install calendar for Linux and Mac OS. Let's open together Python shell and let's import the calendar. Let's say that we want to display the calendar for a certain month, for example, December. So we'll create a variable called DEC and this will be equal to the calendar module dot text calendar. And this is a function that takes calendar inside dot. And this is the day that you want your calendar start with. Let's say Sunday. Then we will take our December variable dot PR month and PR month method takes two arguments. The first argument is the year and the second argument is the month. December is the 12th month of the year. And there it is. We have displayed the month of December for the year 2020. And as you have specified the day of Sunday, your calendar started with that same day. There are a lot of methods within the calendar module that may be of interest to you when forming your own code. For instance, you can display the number of leap years between two specific years. Let's go ahead and define a variable. We will call it leaps. And this will be equal to calendar.leapdays function. And this takes two years, year one and year two. And let's take, for example, the first year, 2000, and the second year of 2020. And let's print leaps. So we have five leap years between 2000 and 2020. You can also fashion that particular example into a piece of working user interactive Python code. So let's say print and here we'll make like that. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And we'll say leap year calculator. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And unfortunately this won't work on the shell. So let's go ahead and open our Visual Studio Code or any text editor of your choice. We need to import the calendar module. We will paste that line and let's have two variables year one and year two asking the user to input the first year and the second year. And the same thing for year two. Enter second year. So we'll have two years now. Then we'll have a variable called leaps and this We'll use the calendar module dot leap days function. And this takes two years as we saw in the shell. So year one and year two. And now let's print the result. All right, so let's go ahead to our terminal and see what we will get. So we'll say Python main.py, enter first year, so we'll say again 2000, the second year 2020, 
And there we go. Number of leap years between 2000 and 2020 is five years. All right, let's get back to our Visual Studio code and let's create a program that will display all the days of the week and all the month within a given year. So let's have a variable called year and this will be equal to int the same idea. We want an input from the user. We will ask him to enter the year to display. And let's print calendar.pr calendar or PRCAL. And we will take the year as an argument. Let me just comment all these lines out. All right, and let's get back to our terminal and Python main.py. Enter the year to display and let's say the next year 2021. Enter and there you go. We have a full calendar from January to December for 2021. You can also list the number of days in the month by using a simple for loop. So let's have a variable called cal or calendar, which will be equal to the calendar module dot a class called text calendar. And inside that class, we will have our calendar module dot any day of the week or the starting day that you want your calendar to start with. So let's have our for loop. So we'll say for i in cal dot iter month days. And also there is iter month dates, iter month, not the dates, but we want the iter month days. And inside here, we want the year as the first argument and the month as the second argument. So again, we will take 2021, the next year, and we will take January, which is the first month of the year. Column and let's print I. All right. Let's check that out. From 1st to 31st, these are the days for January 2021. And notice these nulls or zeros before and after. So I know that Friday will be the first day of the next year. So if we will change from Sunday to Friday and we will run the file again, you will notice that there are no zeros before the first because we have started. This is the first day of the month. You can do many several things. For instance, you can also print the individual month and days of the week. So we will use also for loop. So for name in calendar dot month name. We want to print the name and we'll take the same code likewise but instead of the month, we will use the day. And let's comment these lines out. Let's clear the terminal and let's run the file. So there you go. From January to December, then from Monday to Sunday, the names of the month and the names of the week. The last thing that I would like to show you in the calendar module is how to write functions in HTML. So you can display on a website any calendar that you want. So let me show you how to do that. And let me open the directory. Come in these lines out. So let me create a variable called cal or calendar. And this will be equal to open and we will use the writing mode because we want to create an HTML file. So for the first argument, I will need the current directory. We'll paste that here. And let me name my file. I will call it calendar.html. The second argument is the W, which stands for write. Then let's create a variable called C, and this will be equal to calendar.html calendar, which is a class that takes also calendar.the name or the first day of the week, which is Sunday. Then we want to take that cal variable and we want to access the right method. And inside here, we will take the C and we will access format month method. We want the year and the month. 
so 2021 or let's say 2020 and December and don't forget to close the name of the directory is not modules but calendar module so calendar module we'll save that and let's run that one more time and you can see that Python has created calendar.html file. We'll click here. We'll open with live server. And there it is. You can see that we have displayed the month of December for the year 2020 on a web page. So a better way to write this code is we'll say with open and we want to delete the variable and we'll say as cal column then we want to indent these two lines and we will delete the close because Python takes care of closing that file for you this is more Pythonic way of writing this code and if we will run the same code one more time we will have the same result you can also display the whole year if you wish. So let's create a variable, we'll call it here. And again, we will ask the user to enter the year to display as a web page. Then we will have our variable cal. And let me actually copy these lines from here. Then we will change, instead of calendar, we'll say yearly calendar. And let me delete totally this line, and we will take the cal variable dot write, and inside here we want our calendar module dot html calendar. And this takes inside, as we said, the calendar dot the first day of the week, which is Sunday dot a function called format here format year or method I should say and inside here we will pass the year that we have defined above which is the user input and let's actually delete that last line all right let's get back to our terminal so we want the year 2021 get back to our directory and Python has created yearly calendar.html we'll click that and we will open it with live server and there it is the whole calendar for the year 2021 all right so this was pretty much everything that you needed to know to use the calendar module in Python I hope you liked the video thank you for watching and I will see you in the next videos